We're here with Bethany Salzarulo, who is the Director of Elections and Voter Registration for what region? Cumberland County. Okay, great. So is that how it's done in Pennsylvania? I apologize for not knowing this. <laughs> is that how it's done in, in Pennsylvania? Each election sort of um, oversight is on a county by county basis? Yes. Yep, that's how it's done here. So your um, uh, our, I should say, our uh, rules and regulations come down from the Secretary of State and then are administered on a county level? Correct, yes. And so the municipalities, uh, do they have any role at all in elections? Just being polling places, obviously giving us our poll workers, they're involved in making sure the municipal buildings and, and libraries in different areas have voter registration forms and, and mail-in and absentee ballot applications, things like that. Okay, great. So um, what we're talking about today is, there are two things really. One is if you're out there right now and you're on the margin or you have a non-traditional address because it's under the overpass, you know, by the hill, whatever, um, mm -hmm. how do people like that make sure they maintain their franchise to vote? And then the other question is, right now I believe the governor has pushed the moratorium on evictions out to the end of August, but we're really curious on how people make sure they can still vote if they become one of however many thousands or millions of people who get evicted mm -hmm. in some sort of mass eviction event. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you start with what the situation is right now for people with non-traditional addresses? So the way the, the uh, Pennsylvania works as far as voter registration, you do have to be registered at a physical address, so not a PO box, okay? Um, to be, you know, for, for your registration purposes so that we can put you in a voting precinct, okay? You can have a PO box as your mailing address for us to send you information to and that sort of thing, but you actually have to be registered at a physical uh, residence or a building or, or something. It can't just be a PO box. So okay, currently. It can be a, a location. You could say I live in Lee Tort Park or I live by the park. Um, it would need to be an, a, an address that is precinctable. So that would be a building of some kind. Ah, good to know. That's how it, it currently is. Is so. Okay. So it's um, that's one of the things that uh, we've run into across the country. Mm -hmm. Is I have talked to some election officials who said you know, a lot of people can use the, um, the building, that's the welfare office. They can say, they can register at the welfare office in that area where they live. Mm -hmm. The problem right now for some parts of the country is some of those welfare offices are working remotely. Right. So there isn't anyone there physically to receive the mail or to, you know, legitimize that registration. Um, so that seems like something that, you know, when I, when I worked in shelters, when I was operations manager of shelters, I would register people to vote who came in. I'd mm -hmm. say that's one of the things we had paperwork for. If we had, did an intake on someone who presented themselves as homeless, we'd say, you know, would you like to register to vote now? And then, you know, obviously pr provide that registration. So um, someone who doesn't have access to a shelter because they can't or they won't or they don't want to go, which I completely respect. There are a lot of shelters I wouldn't want to go to. Mm -hmm. um, is there somewhere they can go? Can they go to their municipal building, um, say they live in Carlisle? Can they go to the town of Carlisle and say, I want to register to vote, but I don't live anywhere? Yeah, so there's two options in Carlisle um, where they can do that. It's Carlisle Cares and Safe Harbor. Okay. Um, and we have many people registered um, at those, those two addresses, uh, and they are able to register there so that they are able to vote. So, so if they register there, they don't have to reside there? Correct. Ah. Those are the two, yeah, those are two locations where if you are uh, homeless that you can register and be able to vote using those addresses. So if you register there, but you've been banned, uh, like a lot of these places, both Carlo Cares and Safe Harbor bans people from being on the property. Oh, okay. Do they, it, are they, and we are going to actually, we are going to interview both of those directors. Okay. <laughs> so I will ask them too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, if, if someone's banned from the property, um, I, I'll ask them how that person gets around that problem. 
Yeah, because I don't, you know, again, if they don't let us know that and they're on the registration rolls, we wouldn't have any way of knowing that right. that person was now banned. We just have them in our system, registered, good to go. You know, so, we wouldn't have any of that other information. Right. So, so uh, if I were living in the park, you know, at Lee Tort, which mm -hmm. I just keep using that because it's illegal to live at Lee Tort, so I know I'm not going to get anybody in trouble by saying that. Um, if you were living at Lee Tort, uh, when you put, fill out your registration, you can fill it out, um, you know, 50 West Penn, which is Community Care's address, and then just, I guess you wouldn't be able to get mail back telling you where to vote because your mail would go to 50 West Penn. Yeah, and now again, I don't know their particulars. Once someone, you know, you, once someone registers there, are they allowed to get mail? I did check all of the people registered there. No one has a PO box. So I guess they don't have individual mail, yeah. but I don't know, would they give that to the person? That's something that they would, they would need to respond. We just will register them there and mail their voter ID card to that location. Um, and then what happens to that at that point, you know, would be part of their process there, which I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm, I'm so glad I did this interview before I talked to them. Um, so then a person goes in Pennsylvania, you vote the first time you have to provide some form of ID. Correct. And that could be a barrier if the person doesn't have ID. What if they have ID that doesn't say the address they're registered at? That's okay. So they can use, um, you know, I don't, there's a variety of things that, that a voter can use to show his ID. Um, it's not to check their, uh, address it's more to check you know this person standing in front of me has this name has this signature that sort of thing because you know people change their address they don't update their driver's license right away i mean there's all sorts of different reasons why things aren't matching maybe if you use a utility bill as your voter id you have your utility bill mailed to a p.o box as opposed to your residential address so they're not checking um addresses on those okay so, great yes that, that's, that's a problem. big relief so yeah. now we are facing, I mean, depending on the estimate you look at nationwide, 20, maybe 30 million evictions pending across the country. Um, that could change the outcome of any number of political races. There was a race in Virginia, and I believe it was 2016 or 2017, where the election was down to one vote. Mm -hmm. So if, um, if these evictions happen, what happens to the person who's evicted uh, say I register at 10 West Pomfret Street, I get evicted, I, I move in with my grandmother who lives in Shippensburg, mm -hmm. um, and I completely forget because I've been evicted, <laughs> you know, yeah, I've got a lot going on. That, yeah, yeah <laughs> a, a lot going on. And right. um, say the eviction doesn't get processed, well, I've got two questions. So first, what happens then? What should that person do? So if they don't, so you have to register within 15 days of the election, okay? However, if you don't get around to that, if you forget, if you know you have a lot going on um, and you're now in Shippensburg, you are able to vote at your polling location one last time. Ah, so, so if I could get a ride back to Carlisle. Yes, yep, they could vote where they previously were voting. So election code states, you may vote at your old polling location one last time. So That's that would really cover all of those people who potentially, unfortunately, might be evicted, but it would cover them for that. So. Yeah, that's great. That is, that, I mean, I've been really worried about this. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And that's just such great news. So um, is there anything anyone should know about about registration of you just made the excellent point and that 15 days is new right it was changed from 30 30 to 15 correct yes um is there anything else people need to know when they want to register to vote um and then my last question will be about absentee ballots but if if someone is not voted or never voted in their life or just turning 18 mm -hmm. in august 1st what do they need to know about registering I would say the biggest thing is, you know, to get yourself registered as early as possible. Um, we do have, the state has offered this online option, which is very quick and very easy. Um, as long as you have a driver's license or a Pennsylvania uh, photo ID, 
um, number and you just enter that. It's much quicker than the paper process. Um, you know, we get the, the application instantaneously. Um, it's a really great option for people if you're able. Um, and then don't forget to bring that ID the first time you vote. That's, that's a big one. You know, you don't need it any other time, but that very first time you're voting in a polling location, you have to have it, so. And that's because at the polling location, they compare your signatures after that. So yeah. they've, they've established your signature the first time and then they just compare your signature. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just always, just the first time. Now, I intend to vote absentee. I, I couldn't vote in the primary because I wasn't enrolled in a political party. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I intend to vote for the first time in my life absentee because going to vote has always been like getting ice cream. Yeah. For me, you know, yeah. I just love it. <laughs> Uh, but because of everything with COVID, I've decided to uh, uh, apply for an absentee ballot. That's okay in Pennsylvania. I don't need a reason. I don't need a good reason, right? To yes. Yeah, so, however, though, I will say there are two different types now. We have an absentee oh. ballot application and a mail-in ballot application. An absentee would be for someone who um, cannot be in their municipality on election day or illness or physical disability. A mail-in ballot application is for any reason you want. You don't have to provide a reason at all. Uh, you just fill out the form. So what in your situation, I would say a mail-in would probably be your best option. Um, and you, again, yeah, you considering I haven't left my house in four months. Yes, that would be, <laughs> would be a reason. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's the option, would be the best option for you, obviously. So. Okay, so um, if someone applies for the wrong one by accident, is that going to stop them from voting? No, no, it won't. Um, it's just there are the two options. So we try to, you know, make sure people are informed and they fill out whichever one they, you know, feel is best. Right. So if you're in Washington, D.C. for work and you can't vote, then that's the absentee one. Correct. Yep. And if you're just like me and concerned about either giving or getting mm -hmm. the virus, you can do the mail-in option. Yes. And that's all, that's all, you, your website is very clear. I do like that about actually most of the Pennsylvania uh, state of or Commonwealth of Pennsylvania websites is they're easy to navigate, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so what happens to a person who can go to their local municipality and pick up the application for one of these either mail-in or absentee ballot, mm -hmm. but again, doesn't have any mailing address except maybe a post office box? Yeah, so that the post office box, we can mail a ballot to a post office box. So that's no issue. So if they, if they do have a PO box, um, they would just list that as where they would like that ballot to be mailed. Oh. Um, again, they have to be a registered voter. Mm -hmm. um, so the first section of each application shows uh, where you're registered. And then the second section will ask where you would like the ballot to be mailed. So we can mail that to a PO box. That's no problem. Oh, that's great. So if someone was evicted yes. and they're still, and they're able to do that one more time at this address mm -hmm. thing, but so they could also have that mailing uh, uh, address be grandma's in Chambersburg? Right. Yes, we could have it mailed. Yep, we mail them to Florida. We mail them to Afghanistan. We mail those ballots everywhere. So yes, as long as you're registered in Cumberland County, we'll send it anywhere you want. <laughs> That's great. That, you know, I'm really heartened. I've been carrying around all this fear and some of the other parts of the country I've talked to are not doing all of these things that, that you folks are doing. And I'm really grateful that we had this chance to chat because yeah, me too. You know, <laughs> it's nice to know that right here we're doing everything we can to enfranchise voters. Yes. Um, and I am excited. I, if so, one last question. Yeah. Suppose neither cares nor, and I don't even need an answer on this today. You can let me know in a week. Okay. But neither cares nor safe harbor wants to accept the mail of a person they've banned. Mm -hmm. And I used to work, I used to be the operations manager at CARES. This is a pretty good size band list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't even know that was the name, so I'm learning something today too. <laughs> yeah. um, is there, would it be possible for one of the really, we have some really marvelous um, uh, civic organizations in town. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible for some other organization to accept uh, to, to take on that added responsibility of allowing people to register there. Yes, so to register with them or you mean to register at, let's say, uh, 
the CARES group and then have it mailed somewhere else because that's an no, option too? Yeah. No, what, what I'm thinking of is that this the guy living in the park again mm -hmm. can't go to CARES because one of the things you can get banned for is getting in a fight. Um, and that counts if you're the guy who took the punch, mm -hmm. not just if you're the guy who threw the punch because at the end of the day, it's really hard to tell. I'm you know. sure. I can't. <laughs> yeah. So that's, <laughs> You know, and you and, and you might feel like the completely innocent victim because maybe you said something the other guy didn't like, or maybe the other guy just didn't like you, and you took a punch and now you're banned. So you're living in the park, and you need to go. You you would like to vote in this, say the Amvets Hall. I'm not signing them up, but it's just an mm -hmm. idea. The Amvets Hall said we'll allow the guys who live in the park to register with our address. Mm -hmm. and get their mail here. They can come pick up their application. I mean, their, their absentee ballot. You would be open to a third possible location for... for yeah, I would, just want, I would just need to know ahead of time to make sure that we have that in our system and we have that, that address and where the uh, voters would go. And just, I need to just know ahead of time in case it's not something we currently have available in our registration system as far as the address, that's all. Uh -huh. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm, when, when I'm done with this next 17 hours, <laughs> oh my God. and I take a nap, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and I learn what, uh, what the answers are from, uh, from Safe Harbor and CARES, then if, we need be, if need be, we'll get a hold of you and, yeah, and hopefully sure. set up a third building. Yeah. That is wonderful. I, 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 Bethany, thank you so much for taking the time. No problem. Sharing all your wisdom, and thanks for what you do to, to make our, our democracy work. No problem. Thank you. All right, take care.